I've learned more about integrity than when I began. But God, I thank you. Uh, I've got some kids uh, that tell what I am. Those kids are good. Those kids are good kids and full of integrity. God bless my children. The cruelty of our time is the devil has stolen our kids. Look at the city. It's a shame. A mom that has to work and be away from the house, bring food on the table and pay for a phone bill for a daughter to get called all hours of the night. A gun in some kid's bedroom that she doesn't even know about. An ugliness in the heart that mom doesn't know at the beginning, but after they call her some four-letter words, she finds out. The daughter's not as innocent as she thought. The son's to be pitied. There's people who say, you know, preacher, I don't like to hear preaching like this. I like to hear about the goodness of the Lord and the blessing of God and all of that, and I do too. But you know, I believe God makes us real. God makes us real. He doesn't put us into a fool's paradise. He makes us real. He lets us know that in this hour, we got a whole lot of learning to do. Every single one of us, we got a whole lot of learning to do. Church is not the place that we just feel good. Church is the place where that God begins to deal realities in our life and brings us out of the bondage that so many people are in today. Everything that's wrong will bear fruit. You can treat your wife wrong and it won't bring good results. You can treat your wife right, it'll bear fruit. One of the things that we have to just realize, so many times we blame everything on the devil. The devil's in my wife, the devil's after my kids, the devil this or that. The devil's defeated, basically, if we're right with God. It's when we give the devil an opportunity, he comes in through the distortion. And when we look and we find that our marriage isn't what it ought to be, there is something wrong in the foundation of that relationship. Something is wrong. What can be wrong? So many things can be wrong. I think it's so important for a husband and wife to tell each other, you're important to me. And when you can't spend time together to say, I would like to. And I feel bad that we can't, but today I've got to do this. You know, we got that attitude that who really needs you? And another thing in marriage, I think we need to begin to share. We need to be shared. We need to just be able to share wife and I just the other day, and I'm old enough and smart enough that I shouldn't fall for this. I can understand women falling for it, young people. But we've had a hard time the last year. I've been terribly busy. I've been trying to cut my time down as much as I can without hurting anything, and so that we can just kind of pull things together a bit. And I wanted to spend some time with Cheryl the other day, and the phone rang, and she sat there talking to that person. And I wanted to spend some quality time with her. And I was mad. Mad. Mad and then mean. Why are you mean? Because I love you. No, we won't say that. I'm mean because you're so stupid. I want to spend some time with you and you don't even know it. Well, I don't say those words exactly, but basically, that's what we are. And so often we need to realize it's not easy to win in the relationships we have. We have to begin to begin to talk a bit. We have to begin to realize that, that, that we need to communicate a bit. We need to realize that, that if we're going to get out of life what is meant to be gotten, that we've got to say, God, perfect my marriage. And if God is going to perfect your marriage, God's not going to do it all for you. You're going to have to yield to God. Well, why didn't you just let me know that you wanted to? Because you should have known. Is one of the biggest problems in marriage. You should have known that I wanted to spend time with you.